All right, guys, welcome back to another one take. This time we're taking a look at the Ragnar. We've been going through some of these steel ships recently. And uh, in this one, we're going to take a look at a destroyer. I don't play all that often, but it is a very strong one. As you can see, the AA did all right there. We're still going to need to turn it off and on. <laughs> we don't want to be spotted too often. But this is a very strong radar destroyer. The idea being we have a seven and a half kilometer radar. And combined with these very accurate 150 millimeter guns, 152s, we can take some really good, uh, really good fights with destroyers and win quite easily thanks to our insane HP pool, as well as the, uh, well, our side armor is pretty insane. That's, uh, it's 25, I believe, on the sides, and that's really going to help us anytime we're facing destroyers. It's just... One of those things that's going to shatter most DD shells, and that's really going to help us trade very favorably. In this case, we're going to try and take B, but maybe not be fully committed to it. Ragnar is a massive destroyer, so we can die pretty easily to torps, as well as, uh, well, cruisers and battleships can hit us pretty easily, so we got to be a little careful of that. Not going to radar yet. Now we radar, since we're spotted. There he is. And here you can see the insane accuracy. So a bad, uh, it's kind of a bad thing about Ragnar is actually the accuracy. It's, <laughs> it makes it so you miss a lot if you're not that used to uh, aiming. Um, maybe, uh, maybe a bad thing, but honestly, it's a pretty good thing most of the time. In this case though, we are just going to give up the cap. Nothing too special here. A Little bit of damage in. Very nice that we didn't uh, we didn't receive any damage in return. They're pushing C pretty hard, so we should keep that in mind. Nebraska has got his dive bombers out. So that's okay. Udaloy might get B. Ideally, you want to play this ship as a second line DD. That's how I like to play it. Um, it's really, really strong. Anytime you have someone spotting for you, you're that kind of backup DD that can provide insane gun power. But you just don't quite have... You don't quite have the spotting, and uh, this is a full detection build. We'll look at that a little bit later, but yeah, makes it a little bit tricky to uh, deal with DDs sometimes. But thanks to being 152 millimeter guns, we are actually really good against cruisers a lot of the time. You can run a full range build and farm battleships as well, um, but these 152s actually do pen 30 millimeters of armor. So that's something we can use to hopefully deal with some cruisers. Radar cruisers, of course, will be pretty scary for you, considering how big you are. But if you stay far enough away, you can speed juke a little bit. This speed boost here being 30% uh, is pretty amazing. It's a pretty clunky brick of a ship until you use that speed boost. It obviously doesn't last very long, but you use that sparingly, and that actually gives you some pretty decent maneuverability. I think we do want to go up to sea. Hmm. It really depends where this uh, Seattle is at. Obviously, the farming build is going to be pretty strong anytime you got battleships pushing in. Holland here. Might be good for me to go help on that. And the Fletcher. Kind of indecisive here. First game of the day. A little, uh, <laughs> little bit uh, unsure of myself here, but that's okay. With all these planes, we do want to avoid being spotted as much as we can. Oh, the Marceau is here. Yeah, come on out. Come on out. Come on out. You know you want to. He doesn't know we're here. We don't have Torps, so it's not like we can ambush someone with Torps, but uh, this is really good for us. Got to lead more. Oh my goodness, am I really missing? There we go. Like I said, good accuracy is a little bit of a pain sometimes. Uh, I do need my engine though. With our speed boost up like this, we do want that. Problem solved, 
Unfortunate, weren't quite able to finish him off, but that's okay. We have a heal that we will now use. Butcher coming in on us. Again, look at the uh, speed right now. Oh, they ran into each other. That's kind of funny. So we know the other DD is there. But yeah, trying to hit these guys. I have not played this ship in a long time, so forgive my aim. Uh, there we go. It's looking a little better. Look at that accuracy, man. It's so nice. A couple more hits in there. And I feel pretty confident against these guys, right? So we're just going to farm the GK while we can. Kind of wait here. He is a full secondary build, so we don't really want to farm him for too long. 12 kilometer range is pretty spooky. There's actually planes right on us, so we may as well use our AA to help out. He's not looking so hot here. It's okay. Hmm. Ideally, we would be getting fires, too. Massachusetts here. He'll probably get low. I'd like to help out on that if we can. Shatters into his superstructure? There we go. We can kill this guy. That actually gives me an opening to kind of push these DDs from the other side. That would be pretty nice. Fire chance? No? No fire chance? Feels bad. There we go. Probably going to take a huge hit here. Yeah. All right. AP might be the way to go here. Especially now that he's uh, used his damage control. Can I dodge this? Barely. Okay, we get lucky. Massachusetts had some bad dispersion there. Again, are with our engine. Stop it. <laughs> I need that. All right. We're okay. Half health, only one heal. But we have helped take out... We helped take out the Massa. Hmm. Our team is kind of getting clumped back out here pretty, pretty badly. We do get 360 turrets on, especially the rear. I actually don't remember if the fronts are. I can check that in a little bit. That helps us here turn while still keeping our guns on target. Oh my goodness, there's a submarine right here. I think I just died of subs. If I'm remembering correctly. <laughs> uh, okay. Still lit. Radar? Oh, the sub. I guess? Yeah, it must have been the sub. There we go. Alright. Well, we'll turn our guns for this Holland. And we'll try and land some of these stupid depth charges. some more. Oh, that sucks. We're dead. Alright. That's fine. We uh, we did not really have a team in that one anyway, so <laughs> it's hard to be uh, doing a whole lot in a DD when you just don't have uh, teammates to support you with, but the guns here are awesome. I should probably play this ship more. I don't, I don't think I enjoy it quite as much because we don't have that torp power. If I'm thinking of playing a European DD, Holland feels pretty strong. The other thing to consider is the power creep here, uh, coming through with the new European line. That hasn't quite released yet, but it's in early access. And that has a 9 kilometer radar. <laughs> and a ship with much more speed and uh, much more DPM. Uh, the build I'm running here looks like this. You could definitely go a Fearless Brawler, Main Battery, and AA Expert. You probably are giving up uh, Concealment and... Maybe superintendent for that um, and priority target, allowing yourself maximum DPM and range as a farming build. Um, but I 
typically prefer having the radar utility help me on flanks where I don't actually have a friendly destroyer to help me. If you don't have someone spotting for you and uh, being that second line DD, it's very hard to be a solo Ragnar on a flank with, uh, I think it's 8.3 kilometer detect. Your radar just doesn't reach that far, obviously. It's not like the small end or the upcoming, <laughs> the Gdansk, where you do have stealth radar. Concealment system, prop mod, feeling pretty good here, but uh, you can see it's very easy to eat torps in this thing. So you gotta be a little bit careful of that as well. Let's uh, let's go again. I think this is a uh, probably the only worthwhile steel ship. Can't remember, what are the other ones? Steel destroyer, sorry. Um, Z42, is that the other one? I wouldn't recommend that one. <laughs> I really don't, didn't find that one very enjoyable. Ragnar at least does have quite a bit of utility. The guns are very strong and accurate and uh, it can be very, very good in ranked kind of situations. Cap control is very nice. You have decent enough AA even without defensive fire to deal with carriers. This was a tier eight in that one, but it does allow you to play a little bit more of that free roam role. Um, unfortunately in that last one, we just kind of, it's a blowout. I shouldn't be overthink. You can't overthink blowouts. This is advice for myself as much as for you guys. Don't be overthinking blowouts because there's really nothing you could do. You, so you shouldn't be trying to draw any conclusions about your your own individual play or how the ship plays from blowouts. It's not very uh, accurate. Another thing you shouldn't really draw information from is small games. What the heck's going on? What? <laughs> um. Okay. How? Come on. Come on, man. All right. Well, Salem has a radar. As always in a DD, we're looking for what has radar. Uh, Schlieffen's pretty scary when it comes to those secondaries. Ishikov's pretty tanky. Venice sap is terrifying. Can definitely take half your health in a single salvo. Uh, a submarine, of course, is uh, pretty spooky. Friesland's a pretty nice target for us. If he decides to smoke up in that, we do have that option for for um, radar. Kind of countering that. Z44 is a pretty bad tier 9, so we're not too scared of that. Trump has good guns, certainly. Also has 150s, but I think our hull is a little better than his. He, of course, has torps and that airstrike to help him out. Oh boy, do I go for B? It feels so, so risky. Even without planes in that, it feels very, very risky. Maybe it's okay with our Zao kind of behind us, but I think what I'll end up doing here is actually trying to use this as a way to get cover quickly. Because if the Venice is here, that's just so scary. Just takes out so much of your health so early. But yeah, ideally, you know, if you're a little worried about this, a full game, of course, it'd be much scarier because there would be more people, obviously. Uh, maybe it'd be a good idea to go support the Holland, play a kilometer behind the Holland and nuke some destroyers with them. Mm, our concealment's not even as good as I thought. I'm thinking of going into this gap. I might just use this island here. So let's see. Anybody coming? We're gonna have to be very quick on our... Okay, Salem on their side. Venice could be mid here. We're gonna have to be very quick on our radar and our speed boost here. Try and dodge things. We are located at the moment. Could be some RPF torps coming. Uh, let's get opportunity to check. Yeah, 360 turrets, very nice. Hello Z44. So here's obviously the power of this thing, right? This is where you wanna be. It's just, it just kills DDs, man. <laughs> like, it just kills DDs. It's that simple. <laughs> um, you know, we got help from our Zao, which feels pretty nice. Um, but we're not. What we're not going to do is continue to reverse here. We need to be careful with torpedoes. So we're going to go around a little bit. We didn't end up seeing the Venice shot that I was so worried about. All right, there come the torps. Feels good. Could mean there the Venice is here somewhere. Always want to be looking for that. 
Romp on the other side. Yeah, there's the Venice. And is this Friesland here? No. Nothing else shot. Maybe that was NC. Corpse would be nice for this gap, of course. We could get B right now. I think I'm actually more valuable if I am helping on this Tromp and maybe on the Thrasher here. We'll see. We got a nice hit on, on the NC there. But this is where the fight is. We could spend like a minute and a half getting to B and then going in and capping it and then coming back. Maybe two minutes. But I think I want to be out here to help on this DD engagement earlier on. Don't want to open up yet for this Venice. Um, to potentially kill us. <laughs> but we will open up soon on this Tromp. Probably next time he gets spotted. Venice took a shot. Good. We don't have our radar, unfortunately, for another 40 minute, 40 seconds, 45 seconds. Battleships are a little bit close. Okay, we're lit. That's fine. There we go. See, he wasn't expecting me here. He was thinking he was going to get a fight with the Holland. And now we get the drop on him. Our armor isn't necessarily going to work against the Tromp here. We see the Yushikov has shot us. Hopefully our speed boost plus slowing down is going to help us there. Trying to throw off his aim. And that's what you probably want to be doing a lot of the time in, uh, in Ragnar with your speed boost. That's why you don't really want to use them to get around as much. You want to use them when you're fighting. Because that's going to... Um, there we go. We do get them. Nice. That's going to help you stay alive. Notice we didn't even take damage there. We didn't really get shot at much. Um, it was only the Yushikov, but... It's still uh, it's still something you should be trying to do in this thing. Ideally. Uh, which way is he turning? He's going now. And he's going to get underwater real fast. Yep, and now he's impossible to hit. Okay. 31... 1,000 damage, 2 kills. So you can see how the early battle impact here is pretty pretty good. Um, you're not always going to get that, like last game, of course. Sometimes you just get blown out. But Ragnar can help your team blow out enemy teams. Winning those DD engagements early is very, very, very powerful. And is often what determines a win or loss in ranked as well. So if you're trying to win ranked games, Ragnar could be a good option for you. Small end, of course, not being available is also a really good option there. Fortunately, not available anymore. But this one is pretty good. It's different, though. It's not not the same kind of idea, but is better in a lot of ways with the shell velocity and... Oh, nice. Good uh, corpse. It's better in a lot of ways because of the shell velocity and the accuracy. But it really showcases your, your aim not being true. Uh, there's no... Uh... <laughs> There's nothing to debate about it. If you're missing with Ragnar, you're not aiming properly. Like like I have been in this video. Very clear to see. Since we do have bigger guns than normal on a destroyer, it's also a good idea to uh, look for opportunities to use armor piercing. Be a really good way to go about things as well. Hmm, Torp's there. Spooky. Don't really want to go here. I don't think I have enough... Uh, and to Citadel of Venezia. And his guns will just turn very quickly to shoot me. <laughs> so I'm a little scared of that. If he gets low, we'll shoot. Or if we're able to get behind this island, we'll start shooting at the Schlieffen. Go now, because we're behind the island. Try and get that damage in. Schlieffen is the one spotting us. 3,000 damage, feeling pretty good. You do, of course, have um, 30 mil pen, right? So the the HE is fine as well. Nothing wrong with uh, shooting some HE into cruisers. But when they're broadside like that, that is a great way to do damage. Hmm. Is that Suma going to get farmed out here? or How's this going to work? I don't know, does Schlieffen have the... He probably has the pen with AP at this range. Let's see. Mm. Or he missed. If he doesn't have the AP, um, 
No, it should have. It should have set it out. They probably just had bad dispersion there. Don't really want to go into B right now with the Schlieffen right there. Could even get spotted here. Yep. Take a quick shot. Maybe get a lucky fire. But as a team, we should be able to kill him here relatively quickly. Again, a great way to use destroyers, um, even ones without smoke, is looking for opportunities like this where you can just use island cover, right? Opening up on a Schlieffen at 8 kilometers is not very advised for a gunboat DD, but if we can use an island to stay undercover, it could work out. All right, we might need to spot him for our team here. Ah, the Satsuma did go down. Okay, he detonated him. This game's closer than I thought. Now, I'm the one spotting him, of course, so we do need to keep that in mind. Not like we're going to uh, be able to open up on him very freely. So we'll just wait. Spotting is good. We're at 76,000 spotting damage. It's very strong. Oh, he's on 8,000. Our Holland is probably spotting him at this point. So let's go. Trying to hit his front superstructure, or that's where I should be aiming to get those fires. Rear turret only, unfortunately. Ooh, we got a heal. All right. Salem will be a great way to show off this... Uh, 30 mil pen. Oh, Friesland's in B. Nice. That's also a great target for us. But uh, this is this is a great way to deal with radar cruisers because you just you just well, there's accuracy for you, but uh, you just pen them. It feels pretty good for the for the radar cruiser, not so much, of course. But uh, being able to pen 30 is pretty pretty nice. Other destroyers do have that ability. Harugamo comes to mind, certainly. That's super heal, keeping a minute though. Gotta watch though for the Friesland coming around here. Kinda what I'm looking for at the moment. Nice. They do get him. Might even be able to get over that for a cheeky fire. So a small game, not as much impact, but maybe maybe we did a good job here still. The Friesland, are you here? It's a really nice spot to be in because we uh, we can get some spots and shots on them as they cross here, but we can just dip behind cover very very quickly. But it looks like the Friesland's not here right now. Yushikov is the one. And he's done. So let's go. Uh, let's go finish off the Friesland. Not a bad game. Small games like this can be uh, a little misleading, uh, considering there's just less ships on the board. That's something that is very nice about ranked. It allows ships that are very good in one v ones to shine a little more. Ragnar, I would say, is one of them. Schlieffen, of course, as well. Where when you get into that engagement. There's just less people to shoot at you and uh, help out that enemy destroyer. So I think this game probably shows more of the strengths than the weaknesses of the ship. Okay, Confederate in this one, actually. Confederate means we actually did quite a bit in this one. That's six ships for 20% of their HP. Okay, maybe, maybe a better game than I thought. Still, though, we would like to see higher number of ships, but a very strong one still. Ragnar can be pretty good. Uh, I just don't play it as much. Um, I, th I find that I like having Torps as an option better. Um, Smallland, if you're wondering the differences here, you get 120 millimeter guns on Smallland and you get better concealment, but the guns aren't as accurate, nor do they have the shell velocity. So the idea with Smallland is you have a stealth radar, you have more DPM, um, but you don't have the HP pool. With a commander, it would be higher than this. This doesn't show it completely, but you don't have as much of an HP pool. In a 1v1, a Ragnar actually should beat a Smallend, but a Smallend can 
be a little more comfortable to use on a flank um, with the better concealment there. And then Holland is your torp boat, right? Not having torps on Ragnar is a little bit of a disappointment, honestly. But if you do want that all-out gun power as well as a radar, this can be a great option for, for steel. Um, just real quick before we go, let's let's just make sure. Yeah, Z42, I mean, I haven't purchased it on my main account, but I did play it when it was coming out. Um, but yeah, that's other than that, that's the only other DD than Ragnar. So if you're looking for a steel destroyer, there's not a lot of options, and I definitely think Ragnar is the better pick. Uh, so let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.